My name is Rick Edwards. I'm uh, currently the Director of uh, Safety and ADA Compliance for the Department of Natural Resources, and I'm also the Chairperson of ADA Indiana, the Steering Committee in Indiana, uh, responsible for implementation, uh, promoting implementation of the ADA across Indiana. I, I joined the crowd in uh, 1970 when I broke my neck as a result of a uh, uh, accident that I had in the back of a Volkswagen Beetle and broke my neck like I said and wound up in, uh, in uh, using a wheelchair for uh, it's been too many years now to mention I'm not going to do the giveaway of what my age is but I'm going to be a grandfather here in a couple of weeks. Um, ADA uh, has since it's uh, it was being discussed in Congress so I've been a part of the discussion about the ADA and what it should be and what it means to people with disabilities. So I've had a lot of experience in, in the ADA and, and dealing with it. So it's been interesting dealing with uh, the history and going from not having, not having an ADA to having an ADA. Back in 1970 when I went to uh, going from high school. I was going to Culver Military Academy before my accident and afterwards couldn't do that because of the marching and all that sort of thing involved. So I went to my high school in, in Spencer, which was not accessible. It was on two levels. And my dad, who was the school attorney, told the superintendent, yes, he would go back to school in Spencer. <laughs> so they carried me up and down two sets of ten steps each to get to my classes in the upper levels and, and back down again at the end of the day. So uh, much different with the passage of the ADA. Of course, not that everything was perfect after that, but it certainly changed the mindset of a lot of people about what, was, what their responsibilities were in terms of people with disabilities and how they were supposed to treat and, and react towards the, the issues that they had, the barriers that were there. One of my, one of my favorite stories uh, involved uh, Justin Dark, who was the father of the ADA. And this was when I was working as the state's ADA coordinator. We, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to invite Justin to Indiana to speak to some of the people that were in Indiana just beginning to understand what the ADA was all about. And I had never met Justin Dark. So I didn't know anything about him but by his reputation. And I thought, well, here's a, a gentleman who, my goodness, was going to be just a, an amazing person and, and very outstanding and all that sort of thing. And so I'm sitting in the lobby of the hotel where we were, had invited, invited Justin to come speak. And I'm looking around, make, keeping an eye out for him. And I see this gentleman coming down the hallway in what looked like a wheelchair that was uh, for right out of Goodwill, uh, wearing this funny looking hat. And I thought, I better go take care of this guy and deal with him before Justin shows up. Well, it turned out it was Justin Dart. And I, I quickly found out that, uh, you know, my, my uh, flaws and my preconceived notions about people was uh, quickly changed. He, uh, he was very gracious and, and uh, it, it was, he was definitely a character. I got to, uh, because I had a wheelchair equipped van, lift equipped van, I was able to take him around a couple of places and we, we talked and got to know each other uh, uh, as well as you can in, in, in that short a period of time. And that was, it was entertaining because not only did I get to hear a lot about what he had been dealing with, but uh, we got to share the, the camaraderie and the, the understanding that, you know, this was not just a, a thing that was going to affect us. It was going to be a thing that was going to affect our kids and our kids' kids and many generations to follow. So what we were doing was vitally important, not only to us, but to our kids. Once uh, Justin was there, we sat down and, and we had town meetings where we actually heard from a number of different people in a lot of different communities what, what the issues were, what was, 
what was bothering them, what was, were some of the problems and barriers that they were dealing with. And basically that is what developed the ADA, was hearing that you know, people were having problems with employment, Title I. They were having problems with transportation, Title II. They were having problems in their local stores, Title III state and local governments were, were creating barriers for them. So all of those stories that we heard laid the found work, groundwork and the foundation for the ADA itself. And so we were able to not only hear from people as to what the real problems were, but we were able to put that into an act and, and actually try and address some of those questions, some of those problems, and, and remove some of those barriers. Because of Justin's stature and his, uh, his position in government, we were able to get hold of some of the folks that were the policy makers, some of the movers and shakers, and say, you know, here's an, indiv an individual who was appointed by presidents and an individual whose, whose uh, capabilities and, and expertise and s just plain and simple desire was so great that they had no choice but to listen. And so uh, he, he also uh, instilled in me the ability to recognize that it's important to be at the table um, in order for us to make a change. People with disabilities, not only do we have to have this act, but we also have to have the ability to communicate with those people and become those people that are making the changes and the decisions. Uh, people got organized in the early years uh, before the computers and the emails and all those sorts of things by, by using telephones, by, uh, 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 like you mentioned, the calling trees. Uh, I can remember uh, licking a lot of stamps and doing a lot of envelope stuffing and that sort of thing to try and get uh, the word out about things. Um, and making a lot of a lot of phone calls. I can remember, you know, the ear getting so red and swollen that you'd had to switch ears. So, uh, uh, you know, and, and by word of mouth, we had a lot of folks that would just simply, you know, go to conferences like the Governor's Planning Council conference and and uh, just simply say, hey, you know, this is this is something that's out there. The day the ADA was signed into law, it was. Um, uh, July 26, 1990, and uh, I was not able to go to Washington, D.C. It was, however, something that swept across the country, uh, especially the, for those people with disabilities. I think they, we, um, recognized that this was something very significant. And, of course, you know, on the, the steps of the White House, or the, the lawn of the White House, rather, when uh, President uh, Bush, number one, signed the, the act into law. Um, there were a lot of us that were watching uh, on TV and, and, and enjoying that, wishing we had been able to be there, but recognizing that it was, again, something that was going to have an impact across the nation.